Okay, so it's time to finally start preparing our app for the front end. And that means we need one more thing for our back end. So we're gonna go open up Depths. And I'm not sure if I've already went over this, but you can find all the versions for packages and libraries for Clojure on clojars.org. And we're gonna be using ring cores here. So this is gonna be 0 0.1.13. And that's because our front end is gonna be disconnected from our back end server. But once you do that, you're gonna to wanna to go into core.clj and import that middleware. And it's gonna come from the namespace of ring.middleware.cores. And we just want wrap cores, so we'll refer that. Once again, we're gonna add it to our middleware list. The order in here, I'm not sure if it matters. So I'll add it to the very top. Now wrap cores, we're gonna put it inside of a list because it actually takes parameters. The first one is gonna be the keyword of access control allow origin. And it actually expects a regular expression. But since we're only gonna serve one endpoint, we'll just paste the entire string in, and that should suffice the whitelisting. The next important keyword that we're gonna want is allow methods. I'm unsure if you could add a wildcard, but we know that our front end needs access to get, post, put, and delete. So I'm gonna explicitly state all each of those keywords in this list. And I kinda don't like the indentation of this, so I'll just put this on new line so it looks a little better. That's gonna be all we need to do with the back end. Now it's time to actually set up the front end project. And what we'll be using is Shadow CLJS, and that's actually a node package, so we were gonna initialize this as a node project. And I'll be using yarn, but you can use npm. Both have a init command that you could also pass the flag of yes, and that'll create a very simple package JSON that should look a little bit like this. And the first and most important package that we need is shadowcl.js, so you can npm install this or yarn add it. And then finally, we need to make a manifest file for the closure script project, and that'll be shadowcl.js.eden. And this is an Eden file, so we'll add a closure map. So let's go through this one by one. The source path is where all of our closure script code is going to live. This nrepl port is going to be the port that we expose for nrepl in case we want to connect to it. And then dependencies is where we're going to add all of our front end dependencies that are closure specific and not node specific. And since I'm using VS Code, we're going to need to add CIDR nrepl because that's how the VS Code callback extension connects to the REPL from ClojureScript. All right, and then the last property is builds, and this is going to be how we're going to define our build pipeline. The first property you could add is app, but I'm going to use context just to be a little bit clear. And we're going to target the browser. There are other options like targeting node in case you want to make a node project, and that's going to be mostly for like Electron. But I'm also going to add the compiler options so that it compiles to ES6 code instead of the normal ES5 vanilla JavaScript. We're going to have to make these directories in a little bit, but output direct and asset path is going to be where all of the compiled JavaScript is going to live. And this part might go over your head a little bit. So we're going to set the in init function so that when the browser loads, it'll call this function. And that'll be just main init function. It's a. Uh... And then finally, in DevTools, this is going to be. Defining our dev server, so we're gonna serve everything coming from resources slash public. And then the port, not super important, but I'm gonna serve locally on port 4200 because the last project I was using was Angular, so that's the port that we're using. All right, so now we need to actually create this resources public folder. And inside of that, we need an index.html file. And that's gonna be where all the closure script code is gonna be served from. So we can quickly add the HTML scaffold. And I'm using Emmet for that. But the most important thing for all of this to work is that we need to add a script pointing to where our compiled JavaScript is going to live. And it's gonna be JS main. And the reason why it's named main is because of this part. We're naming it main. Also while I'm here, I'm gonna add a div with the ID of root. Kind of convention whenever you create a React app. But now that I mentioned React, let's talk about our dependencies. So for the node dependencies, we're gonna need React, React DOM, React Refresh. And then for styling, I'm gonna be using Tailwind CSS for this project. So I'll install all of that right now. And we'll come back to scripts later because I'm gonna to have to add a little bit of a Tailwind configuration. But we can add a start script to call shadowcl.js watch. And the reason why it says contacts here is because that's the name of our build. We need a couple of dependencies of our own. The first one is going to be clj.js ajax. And that's going to be what we're going to use to make HTTP requests to our server. And then our React library is going to be Helix. And actually, let's go to their repo. 
So the reason why I picked Helix for this project instead of something like Reagent, and if you don't know, Reagent is the go-to library in the ClojureScript world. However, I am by trade a JavaScript developer, so I want to use the newest stuff in React. And Helix is the most modern approach, giving us things like hooks, and the overall workflow is very natural for a React developer, whereas some of the other ClojureScript alternatives try to closure everything, so it's a little muddled up. So I want to use my existing knowledge coming in. But yeah, that's what Helix is, and our front end's almost done. The only thing really missing is actually an entry point. So we're going to go ahead and make the source slash CLJS slash contacts directories. And then inside of there, we will put our core.clJS. Now we can go open up that file, add our namespace, and then finally make sure that we have an init function. We're going to have to add this metadata tag thing for export. And in translation to JavaScript, this is the module.exports or export default. But with all that set up, we can go ahead and run our start script. So yarn start. And this may take a while to build at first. But once the build's completed, you can go back to your project and inspect the file. There will now be a JS directory. And if you open up that, that's going to be all the stuff that is being created. Yeah, let's not look inside this. This is some crazy stuff. But you'll also notice that th we're using the watch command. And we can see this in our dev server which is at localhost 4200. We're not gonna have anything yet, but we did log to the console, the hello world, and there it is. So we know that our closure is working. Okay, so before we continue on, I kind of want to start setting up the tailwind. We're gonna need two files for that. So at the root, we'll have a tailwind.config.js file, and this might not be the best place to put it, but I'll have a tailwind.css file in source slash tailjs, but not in inside of our contacts namespace kind of just want it to be in the front end directory but not in the front end code directory if that makes any sense the css portion is going to be pretty straightforward this is what you will find on the tailwind docs we're going to use the at tailwind macro to import the base components and utilities from tailwind the tailwind.config.js is a little trickier but this is the base that the docs provide and there's really only one change that i want to make at the moment and that's to make the container class always centered so that we don't have to add in our margin auto left and right every time we want to use the container class but that's when we need to go back to our package json and add a new script called build styles we're going to call the tailwind build command and tell it that the source is the tailwind.css file that we created and then the output we're going to also put in the resources slash public but this time going to be inside the CSS and I named it main just so it matches our main.js but now whenever we run the build style script we're going to create that CSS file. This part's optional but you can add the build style script in the start script so whenever you work in your local server you'll have an up-to-date CSS style sheet which means we also need to add the link to that CSS file and the relationship here is that this is a style sheet so let's add that too. And that takes care of the style sheets. So let's go back to our closure script code and start importing our libraries. So this is all we need for now to get started. The Helix core provides us a macro called def and C. And it's a lot like the def and macro that creates a function, except we're going to create a React component from this. And that'll be our app component. And as always, when you want to be safe, we're just going to render a div that says hello world. But we're going to update the init function here to call the actual React DOM. So this is going to be a little bit of JavaScript interrupt, but we'll call React DOM render, where we can pass in the app component, and we'll render it targeting the div with the ID of app. And I made a mistake. I actually also need a dollar sign, which goes in front of app here. And the dollar sign is just a quick macro that says render this React component. And you'll also notice that there's a little red squiggly down here. And that's because the closure linter is actually disconnected from the closure REPL. So it doesn't actually understand the logic of macros. If it bothers you, you can create a directory called clj-condo with a file called config.eden. And this will tell clj-condo, which is the closure linter, how you want to lint some stuff. There's an option called lint as, and we know that def and c behaves a lot like the closure defin. So we can tell it to lint it as, as if it was the same thing. There's also an option called unresolved symbol, and this goes in the linter's property. This is going to be important for the dollar sign macro, 
And all we're saying here is the exclude. So whenever CLJ condo sees a dollar sign, it'll just ignore whatever's inside of the form. Might take a while to update, but that should fix that in a little bit. I didn't realize this was running this entire time, but I'm restarting our dev server now. And we're gonna need a refresh because we have a new server running, but there's our hello world being rendered by React. So we're on the right track. And before I close out this video, I wanna show you how to use the Ajax library that we imported, and I'll do it inside a comment block. But Ajax gives us a get macro, as well as the other HT methods, but it takes in the URL that we want to hit. And then the second argument is a map with the handler, and sometimes if we need to, options. But the handler is a function that we tell Ajax how to deal with the response. And how we want to deal with it is, in this case, it's just going to log into the console. We're going to use the JS interop version of printing for this case. And before we run this, we'll need to run our backend and if you remember, we created an alias called run, and that'll start our backend server. In our editor though, since we want to call this code inline, we're going to need to connect to the REPL. There is a distinction here between connecting and jacking in, because jacking in assumes that there's no REPL started yet, so it's going to start one. This time though, we want to connect to a running REPL, and that's because shadow CLJS is itself a REPL. Let's so gonna ask the build, which is context. But now we could run the get. And it returns an object object, but we actually want the JS console. So we need to go back to our browser. And it looks like we didn't configure cores correctly. So, hmm. Let's take a look at the code. And this should all be happening in core.clj. That's All right. Um, this looks right. What if maybe routes? Contacts, contacts, slash. Oh, wait. I have a feeling. So, remember in the last video where I said that we fixed a trailing slash problem? Well, currently this get is going to a route without a slash. And I think that's what's actually the problem. So, this is not going to work. And if we go to the console, it's saying that there's a the cores error. But I think what's happening is that this route can't be reached because we forgot the trailing slash. So if we evaluate this instead, in our browser, we get the list finally coming back. And that's an error on my part because in routes.clj, on the backend side, this nested route here has a slash when instead it's supposed to be an empty string because the trailing slash handler will add a trailing slash and redirect accordingly, not take it away. It's an important distinction, but it makes a huge difference. And if we go to our servers and restart the backend server, which is my right hand side, then the get to the non slash version should work. So now that the server started, let's go back to the front end code. So core.cljs, evaluate this. I know that's the wrong one. Um, I meant to show the one without the slash. So now, evaluate it. And in the browser, it still fails. Why? Okay, so I did some research, and it seems that on Reddit, the core's issue is still in active development. So instead of trying to figure out how to fix this trailing slash issue, we're just gonna be really careful and use the routes that we know are gonna work and that aren't gonna be redirected. But let's move on to something a little less ambiguous. And that is to make a React component with some styling from Tailwind. And we'll start simple. We're going to create a nav component that will only just say contact book. And right now we'll add it into our app div. And remember to render our component, we're going to use the dollar sign macro where we can supply the component of nav. And we move the browser to this window so that we can see some styles take place. Now the way Tailwind works is just a long list of class names and we can do that inside of a string. Here we're going to apply some padding for the top and bottom and a shadow as well. That's weird, I guess I have to refresh. But an interesting thing that we can do inside of Clojure is instead of a string, we can replace this with a list of symbols or variable names if you're more comfortable with that terminology. It's going to need the quote mark because so the compiler could understand that we could Translate this into strings afterwards. The inner div here is going to have a class name of container, 
and that's just to center it kind of but basically it'll have margin on the left and right so it looks a little bit better and then finally the h2 i'm just gonna size up the text a little bit bigger and once again i guess i have to refresh but there's our starter nav and then not to have too many divs inside of our markup we could also import a fragment and our app component outer div could be replaced by that react fragment so now we have a good starting point and this is where I'm going to end the video. But in the next video, we're going to start introducing some state, getting some data into our front end, and playing around with that. And slowly, we'll shift over to doing all the CRUD operations on the front end with some state management. But as always, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Hopefully, subscribe and like. But I'll see all of you next time.